One topic I've not covered on this channel is thirds. So that'd be major thirds or minor thirds that we get from from scales that enabled us to, to build them. Uh, I think this is a really important topic to understanding the guitar, understanding harmony. So I thought I'd dedicate a video to what are thirds and ways you can practice thirds and, and, and get used and get grips with the sound of them and how to play them on the guitar. Now check that description for a link to the PDF from today's lesson, as well as a link to my Patreon page. So the absolute basics first. What are thirds and where do they come from? It makes sense if we do this in C major, take the C major scale. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And that's a continuous sequence, so it keeps going. And to get a third, what you do is you take, take one of those notes, like C, makes sense to start there, count three along, so C, D, E. So E is a third away from C, and that's an interval, a musical distance, and it will have a particular character to that sound. Go to D, do the same thing, D, E, F, so D and F are a third apart. Then we get E and G, F and A, G and B, A and C, and B and D. And then some of those are major thirds, C and E, F and A, and G and B. And the others, the remaining ones, so D, F, E, G, A, C, and B, D are minor thirds. So that's what we call the C major scale in thirds. And you can do this with other scales too, but it gave us seven pairs of thirds. And it went major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor. And that's very much like the chords, so you get in that key as well, right? So let's get onto some things we need to be able to do. Let's first, first locate them on the guitar. So the really important thing about thirds is how we find them, we can find them either on the same string, so reaching up to get it, or we can find it on the string below. So say if you're on the E string, you could find the third either on the same string on the E string, or you can find it on the A string just below. Here's the major thirds of C and E, so that first pairing on the same string. And on the string below. And I really suggest when you practice these, you sing these. You should know the sound of that E before it comes in. But you'll notice, regardless of what strings we do on it, it has the same sound quality. It's quite an uplifting interval sound, major thirds. Now let's do the same with minor thirds. So the first minor third we had in that scale was D and F. Again, we can get them on the same string, but you'll notice it's one fret closer than the major third. And we could get the minor third on the string below, like this. So that's the geography of where thirds are. And we could play them like that, but I want to take that scale, C scale, so this. And we could do the thirds in position. So this is going C, E, D, F, E, G, F, A, G, B, A, C, B, D, and then finishing with C to E. Good thing about practicing that, it takes you away from playing your scale in order, it gives you those jumps. Again, sing it. Now what you just played was what's called melodic thirds, where the thirds are played one note after the other. So you play a C, then you play an E. But we could also do that as double stops, so where you play the notes at the same time. Say if we laid out the C scale on the B string, like this. We could find that third of each note on the E string, just below, like this. Now, if you really want to unlock the fretboard and how to find arpeggios and, and so forth, then you really want to be able to do that on all string sets. So that would be B and E, as we just did, G and B. D and G. A 
A and D. And E and A. And when you get into this, a lot of familiar guitar shapes make sense. Say if you take a, a C chord, there's the shape of a major third at the start of it. There's one on the top too. Take a G chord, there it is at the bottom. So you'll, you'll, you'll notice how the guitar kind of chords and arpeggio shapes, they kind of make sense when you understand how thirds work because chords are built in thirds. The next thing you could do is you could try and do the melodic thirds, but let's extend it to two octaves. Let's go up. bring it back down. And when you've got a handle of that, try ascending the first pair of thirds, so C, E, and then descend the next one. So then you go F, D instead of C, E, D, F. And a good practice tool to remember is you can just reverse anything you do. So why not descend C and E, so you go E, C, and then ascend D and F. So you go E, C, D, F, and you continue up the scale like that. Another thing I like to practice is jumping up a third midway through a scale. So instead of say playing a C scale going, you know, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, at some point within the sequence, you just jump a third. Say if you went C, D, E, and instead of playing F next, you jump to G. So you go up a third, miss out that note in between. You could do that anywhere within the scale. Take these examples. That just disrupts the flow of the scale. It's great technical practice. It's good practice for the ear too. I really also like applying it to chord progressions like in arpeggio form. So instead of playing, say if we had a two, five, one in C, instead of playing, you know, D, F, A, C for D minor seven, then G, B, D, F for G seven and C, E, G, B for C major seven, harmonize it to thirds like this. And that's a really useful thing to practice so you get double stops, the texture, into your playing. We can take that idea a little bit further and approach each pair of thirds chromatically from a semitone below, like this. And that works beautifully on Latin tunes. And also just simple things like turning a, a lick or a melody, a line into thirds. Take this very simple line and we could harmonize it in thirds. Once you practice your thirds and you've gone through all these things in 
every major scale and every key or in different scales too. You can also do what's called a tenth, which is it's like the next third in the next octave. So if you've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, E was the third, C to E. But if you kept going, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, my ten, tenth digit is an E. So it's like the next third above, if you like, but it's it's called a tenth, and you could you could work with those. Um, a lot of people on guitar first encounter those with the with the Beatles song Blackbird. But anyway, I wanted to show you today just a few ways that I've practiced thirds, things that have helped me both technically on the instrument, both with my ear and both with my understanding of arpeggios and how to find them and and, and so forth. Thirds are so important because they're the building blocks of our chords, so I think there's great value in practicing them. Um, you know, some intervals are, are more common than in others, and thirds are obviously super important. If you've got any questions or any comments, um, then do leave them below. Um, or if you've got any other suggestions on ways you've practiced them, I'd, I'd love to know. Anyway, check the link in the description for a link to the resources from today, as well as a link to my Patreon page, which brings me to say thank you to all of my patrons for supporting the channel. Uh, for all of you, until next time, you take care.